What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching our video order stuff and today for you I'll go through my best tips for making Instagram friendly sized videos in Final Cut Pro. I'll go through filming clips, setting up your project, editing and then the best export settings to use. It's going to be a snappy video so I've got no time for the intro, let's just dive straight in. Firstly let's tackle filming a clips and it doesn't matter so much if you film horizontally or vertically if you're going to make a square format video. But if you know that your footage is destined to be an Instagram post, I would advise shooting vertically. And that way you can use Instagram's preferred 4x5 aspect ratio and you will retain more resolution. Okay, let's film a clip. I'm going to use this camera. There we go. I've just turned the camera vertically on the tripod. You can hold it, of course. Here we go. Hey guys, I just posted a video where I go through the best techniques for filming and then editing square and 4x5 aspect ratio video in Final Cut. I go through techniques for filming, resolutions, aspect ratios, setting up your project, rendering down, best export settings and that kind of thing. I think you'll like it. It's up in my bio. Go there now. Something worth bearing in mind is it's often better to film with a slightly wider angle than you would usually use and that's just to give you a little bit more flexibility when cropping. Like the shot you just saw, that was shot at 20mm full frame. It's just a case where shooting a little bit wider is playing it safe. It doesn't have to be much wider, but I think you'll appreciate the flexibility. One last minor consideration with the way that I've positioned myself in the frame here is that with most lenses, the sharpest area is dead center and you can see I've positioned myself with my face dead center. It's also, as I mentioned, a 20 millimeter lens, so if my face was nearer towards the edge, you might notice a little bit of distortion as well. So more reasons to frame it this way. When it comes to resolution, HD is fine, 4K even better, more than that, obviously it's just a bonus. Ideally, it's good to try and retain as much resolution as possible between shooting and posting, although Instagram sometimes has an annoying way of making the footage look a little bit softer, which is annoying. Anyway, we've got our video, let's get it into Final Cut and set up a project. In Final Cut, when you create a new project, you can see there are a number of presets to choose from. And when you select square as the project settings, for some reason, the default resolution is 720 by 720, which of course I can't recommend because by today's standard, that's considered super low resolution. So for square format, the best bet is to use custom project and set it to match the resolution of your footage. So for 4K UHD footage, which is 3840 by 2160, I'd go for 2160 by 2160. HD we know is 1920 by 1080, so of course for that I'd recommend 1080 by 1080. For the Insta-friendly 4x5 aspect ratio, which is something like this, roughly. You want to choose custom again and I'd recommend the strange resolution of 2160 by 2700. Of course if you want to set your own resolution and you're not quite sure what that would be, after all 4x5 aspect ratio is kind of a weird one to work out, there's a website I'd recommend and it's called calculateaspectratio.com. It'll give you the exact resolutions there. Brilliant. Anyway, next let's jump in and edit the clips. In Final Cut now, and as you can see, I filmed that in two clips, and I've got the project set up with the recommended resolution of 2160 by 2700. I've already done the color grading and the audio tweaks, so here's what we've got so far. Hey guys, I just posted a video where I go through the best techniques for filming and then editing square and 4x5 aspect ratio video in Final Cut. I go through techniques for filming, resolutions, aspect ratios, setting up your project, rendering down, best export settings and that kind of thing. I think you'll like it. It's up in my bio. Okay, definitely some stuff we need to work on and the first thing I need to fix is the jump cut and all I'm going to do is just crop in a little bit on the second clip so it looks a little less jarring. It's not perfect, I know, I usually prefer to try and hide jump cuts with b-roll if I can, but I think for platforms like Instagram and TikTok this kind of thing is less important. I did a whole video dedicated to techniques for avoiding jump cuts and I'll link that below if you're interested. Now that I've done that I want to keep these clips tidy so I'm going to select them both right click and select new compound clip. This means that now when I make tweaks it will affect both clips together. So of course the next thing to sort out is these black bars next to our clips and all I need to do is just crop in until my image fills the frame and for me that's at 142%. Next I want to sort out the framing of this image so I'm just going to change the position of my clip a little bit just until it looks right. It's more of a feel thing and that's about right for me. The last thing I want to do is just add a little fade in and fade 
fade out at the beginning and end. So I'm going to select our clip and hit Control V to open up the video animation and then just add a couple of fades. You don't have to do this of course, this is just my preference. Finally it's time to go through the best export settings for Final Cut Pro and I know best is an opinion but Believe me when I say it's a very informed opinion. I did a video a little while ago where I did weeks of research, investigation and testing into what the best settings are for exporting Final Cut and then uploading onto YouTube. I'd recommend watching that video, of course, it sort of broke my brain a little bit for a few weeks. I'll link it up here and it's down below if you're interested. But the too long didn't read conclusion was that the best option for exporting videos is to select render, master file, then computer and of course make sure the better quality option is selected in the drop down menu. I found the computer option the best balance between image quality and file sizes and it's now the way that I render down every video I do. And now it's time to condense everything in this video down to some bite sized tips for you to take away. And the first and most obvious is to shoot vertically. Vertical shooting just makes so much sense for platforms like TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, it's a no brainer. Next is to shoot with a slightly wider angle and as you'll be doing some sort of cropping, consider your framing with that crop in mind. And with all of that cropping, it's good to keep the resolution as high as possible for as long as possible. If you're following the first two tips, you should be fine with this one. When setting up your project in Final Cut, I'd recommend using the custom setting. That way you can set it up with any resolution you like. And remember that website, calculateaspectratio.com if you need to work it out. For me, by far the best export settings in Final Cut is the computer mode. Don't take my word for it, try them out for yourself. But for me, that was the best balance of file size and quality. Anyway, that's it for now. You can ask me questions about anything in this video in the comment section below if you want to. I'm down there as much as I can be. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I've got a large archive of videos about videography on this channel of which YouTube has handpicked this video for you and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.